Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Hey, that fellow's in a big hurry. Whoa, look at him go. He's in a hurry, too. Seems like everyone's hurrying. That's right. Everyone's hurrying to the nearest mailbox. They're rushing to get their orders in for their official Challenge of the Yukon secret two-way signal flashlight. This brand new two-way signal flashlight is the amazing invention made specially for you listeners. It's a real flashlight that actually sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. It fits in your pocket so you can carry it with you anywhere. And with a flick of your finger, it flashes red or it flashes green. You'll agree there's nothing like it for signaling friends, for sending secret codes and messages. But to get your two-way signal flashlight, you'll have to hurry. It's not on sale in stores. For a limited time only, we're making a sensational offer. We'll tell you all about it in just a few minutes. Steve Ballard was known to Sergeant Preston and his famed dog, King, as a decent sort of fellow, despite the fact that he worked in a Dawson gambling house. In fact, Sergeant Preston had come to depend on him for tips on suspicious characters and crooks who drifted through the place. The sergeant had been on patrol in the back country for a month. When he returned to Dawson, he learned that Steve had quit his job on order of the doctor. Preston and his dog went to the cheap rooming house where Steve Ballard and his wife Bess lived. What's the trouble, Steve? They told me you had to quit your job. That's right, Sergeant. Doc Hunter says I've got to get fresh air and plenty of it. What'd you do before you came to the Yukon, Steve? I, I've i never told anyone since I came north, but I, I don't mind telling you. I didn't intend to pry. It's all right. I, I was a pilot on a riverboat in the state, Sergeant. During a flood, the channel changed. I hit a snag and sank the boat. Several people were drowned. Poor Steve. After that, he could never go back to the river. Yes, there's an unwritten law. A pilot who sinks his craft is barred from the river forever after. In my case, it was clearly an accident, Sergeant. I, I could have gone back. In fact, his employers wanted him to. But I'd lost my nerve. I knew I'd never be able to handle a wheel again. That's the story, Sergeant. Why'd you turn gambler? Oh, I'd watched the professionals who operated on the river boats. I knew all the tricks, and, well, I knew nothing else to do. But, Sergeant, Steve's missed the river. The only time I've seen him gay and happy since we came up here is when spring comes. When the ice goes out of the Yukon River and the boats come up, he's he's like he used to be. I guess the river's in my blood. Have you a job in mind, Steve? Job? No. We've saved enough money to pay Doc Hunter and take us back to the States. The best you want to go back? No, of course not, Sergeant. Steve and I hope to make this our home, but, well, I guess it's impossible. He's not able to wield a pick or pan a creek. I know something that might interest him. Yeah? A job? A job Steve could handle? I think so. And it would keep him close to the river and the boats. But not on them, Sergeant. I tell you, my nerve's gone. Ever hear of Sawtooth Shoals about 50 miles down river? Yes. I've talked to pilots who made the trip through there. They say it's tough going. That's right. A number of steamers and smaller craft have been wrecked trying to get through those rapids. Only the most expert pilots are employed for the job. I don't want any part of it. Well, Steve, the government's building a lighthouse on the eastern shore. They'll need a light tender when the ice goes out of the river and the shipping season opens. Oh, Steve. Would you be interested in taking the job? Keep you out in the open, close to the river in boats. What about Bess? It'll be pretty lonely for her up there, Sergeant. I wouldn't go without her. I was coming to that. 
The keeper of the light will have a comfortable log cottage, and ground will be cleared for a garden and flowers. Steve, that's wonderful. I'd love it. Even at that, Bess, you'd miss the excitement of Dawson with its shops and shows. The mail packets make a run both ways once a week. She could come to Dawson now and then. Oh, Steve, please. <laughs> Sergeant, you've sold the idea to Bess. I think we'd better take it. Good. You know, Steve... This country needs good people like Bess and you. I thanks, Agent. King and I'll drop in now and then, spend the night, or have a meal with you. Won't we, King? <laughs> <laughs> and both of you will be more than welcome any time. Uh, that's right, Sergeant. Within a short time, the soft, warm winds, known as Chinooks, spread over the Yukon Valley, melting the snows and then unlocking the ice-bound rivers. It was then that Bess and Steve Ballard journeyed downriver to take possession of the government cottage overlooking the tumultuous sawtooth shoals of the Yukon River. By mid-July, they agreed that they had never before known such happiness. Steve, just look at these miracles. They never grew so big and beautiful back home. Yeah, folks usually think there's nothing but snow and ice up here in the north. They should come up here in the summertime and see what a paradise it is. Oh, Steve, I love it so. So do I, Bess. I, I never wanted another job. This one since me to tea. Ah, just look at that river. Give us anything like it. It's wonderful. And it's made such a change in you, Steve. Well, you're tanned like an Indian. And you're strong again. Hey, hear that? It must be the Indian Queen coming up with her. It's due this morning. No doubt of it. Uh, Bess. Yeah? You know, you haven't been to Dawson since we came here. <laughs> Steve, I haven't even thought of going. I've been too happy. Well, just the same. It would do you good. There's a new musical show there. I read about it in the papers. And I saw you looking at the clothing ads. Don't tempt me, Steve. I'll spend all your money. Oh, good. What do we need with money when the government provides us with a house and everything we can eat? <laughs> <laughs> now go in and change clothes. Pack a bag and be out again in 20 minutes. Well... I'll signal Captain Black to haul Keel and take on a passenger. All right, Steve. I'll hurry as fast as I can. I'll get the launch ready and we'll run out to the channel. You can go aboard there. Hi there, folks. Hello, Captain Black. Stand by for a passenger. Send her aboard, Steve. Glad to have her company. And don't forget a kiss before you go. <laughs> no, I wouldn't forget. <laughs> ah. Now have a good time. I shall, and I'll be back day after tomorrow. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Take my hand, man. Here you are. She'll be coming back with you on the return trip, Captain. We're going down the river at about daybreak, Steve. You can have her breakfast ready. Okay, Captain. So long, Bess. Bye, Steve. Oh, Steve, The following day, in a Dawson hotel room, four men sat idly talking with a lack of interest characteristic of men killing time and waiting for something to happen. Finally, one of them, a man named Jack Sharp, stood up and said, <laughs> I'm bored, Stiff. So yeah. am I. Where's Ace Dunham? I don't know where he went when he left here, but he's got some scheme in mind. He should be back any time now. That's the trouble with Dunham. He never lets us in on his schemes until he's ready to act on them. Jesus. Trouble? <laughs> That's why Dunham's schemes never fail. He keeps things to himself. Oh, here he is. Hiya, boss. Well, boys, you can get going. We have work to do. Good, it's about time. What's up, Ace? You boys remember seeing that little mail packet that came up river yesterday? The Indian Queen? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. See these tickets? Tickets? What about them? Yeah. What I them? bought up all but one of the staterooms. Huh? Some woman's got the six. But why are we pulling out of Dawson? I thought you said we'd come up here to make a killing. Yeah, and we've done nothing since we got here a week ago. A killing yeah. time. Uh, calm down, all of you. I just learned something mighty important. Secret stuff, too. Well, what do you what mean? On? A quarter of a million dollars in gold bullions going out on that packet tonight. And we're going to get it. Bullion? Wait, Wait a minute. Did you ever hear of a word called piracy, Dunham? Yeah, I've heard of it. Well, they hang men for committing piracy. Don't let that worry you, Jack. I have this deal figured out to the last detail. We'll have that gold and be across the Alaska-Yukon boundary long before the Mounties hear about it. And when they do hear about it, they'll pick up our trail and they'll follow us to Kingdom Come if they have to. Jeez, right. Right. They won't have to know who did it. 
fact, boys, they'll never know the Indian Queen was robbed. Yeah? Well, how do you mean? As far yeah, as the Monties yeah. will know, the Indian Queen went on the shows. The Sawtooth Rapids and all on board, including the cargo, was lost. <laughs> when that packet hits the rocks, the bottom will be ripped out of her and the upper structure will be swept downstream like a shoebox to sink in the deep water. Well, I don't know. Uh, Dunham. Yeah, Jack? You mentioned a woman passenger. Who is she? Uh, I don't know. I didn't want to ask too many questions. I was lucky to pick up all the staterooms but hers. Why? I don't like the idea of murdering a woman. Isn't there some way we could keep her off that packet? Yeah. Yes. Now, listen, money. you guys. I told you there's a quarter of a million gold to be split. If we start trying to keep that girl off the boat, somebody's going to get suspicious. Just the same, I don't like the idea. All right, Jack, you don't like it, but I'm running this job. We're going to let things ride as they are. We go aboard the Indian Queen just before she pulls out at nine tonight. Okay, okay. And if the captain or any of the crew start asking questions, we're investors who came up here to examine mining properties. That's what I said when I bought the tickets. You got it? Oh, let yeah, me yeah. I get your belongings packed. You'd better buy some walking boots. We're going to need them when we head for the border. The Indian Queen nosed into the swift current of the river on schedule. Hour after hour, she moved gracefully downstream. Ace Dunham strolled the deck of the little packet, acquainting himself with every detail necessary to the success of his bold venture. Then he joined his man in the stateroom. Hiya, boys. Oh, uh, boys, they're ready to take over. Good, good enough. Now, here's the layout. There are two men in the engine room. Joe, you and Alex will take care of them. Okay, boss, just leave it to us. And there are two lifeboats, one on either side of the stern. We'll go ashore on them after we get the gold. What about the captain and the pilot? You help me take care of them. They're in the pilot house now talking to the woman. What's she doing up so early? I was coming to that. I overheard her say that she's supposed to go ashore there at Sawtooth Shores. Hey, no way. Her husband is a lighthouse keeper. You didn't tell lighthouse. us about that. No, house. I forgot about that light keeper. You'll be watching for this boat. You'll see it hit the rocks and go to pieces. You can bet he will. Especially if his wife's on board. Why, he'll be coming out in his launch to meet her. He yeah. can't do anything to save the ship or anyone on board. He'll have to turn back to shore. And we'll go down to his place on foot. Grab him and throw him in the river. When that's done, we'll have covered our tracks perfectly. Oh, we'll sure have to get rid of him. You all understand what you're to do? Sure, sure. All right, then. Let's get started. All right, come on, man. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice have done it. Yes, these crisp, tender, keen taste in breakfast cereals shot from guns have come up with an offer of a lifetime. It's a remarkable new invention made specially for you listeners. It's the new official Challenge of the Yukon secret two-way signal flashlight. It's a special kind of flashlight. A real flashlight that's two-way. That is, it sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. Think of it. It actually flashes either red or green. And it works with a simple flick of your finger. Can you believe it? Imagine having a two-way signal flashlight like this for sending secret codes and messages. It works much like the blinker signal guns used by the Army and Navy. This secret signal flashlight has a special plastic directional signal barrel. That's to prevent others from detecting your secret signal flashes, except the person at whom they're aimed. What's more, you can carry this amazing two-way signal flashlight wherever you go without anyone being the wiser. That's because it's pocket size. It fits snugly in your pocket. Talk about fun. You can make up secret codes and messages to signal friends. For instance, three red flashes might mean, hurry, I need help. Or two green flashes and one red flash might mean, meet you at the hideout in five minutes. Say, your new official challenge of the Yukon signal flashlight has Sergeant Preston's name in his own handwriting across the side. This special signal flashlight is a beauty. It's shiny black and comes complete with standard replaceable electric bulb and battery. Send for yours today. Send while there's still time. All you do is send 25 cents in coin. That's all. Just 25 cents and one box top from a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Include your name and address printed plainly and mail to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. You'll go for this crisp, tender breakfast cereal of wheat or rice shot from guns. 
It's delicious. You'll go for this sensational new secret two-way signal flashlight. It's terrific. And it's not on sale in stores anywhere. So tonight, send 25 cents and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. Mail with your name and address to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. That's Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. Now to continue our story. Unaware of the plot that was materializing around them, Bess Ballard, Captain Black, and the pilot were in the wheelhouse, enjoying the majesty and beauty of the Yukon River. This has been a wonderful trip, Captain Black. You'll never know how much I've enjoyed it. Yeah, maybe so. But I'll bet you're glad to be getting back home to your husband. (laughs) Yes, I am. It's my guest Steve's fixing his breakfast just about now. I'll bet he'll come out to meet us before we get in the channel. He'll be that anxious to see you. Oh, I'm sure he will. He'll meet us with the launch. Yeah. Oh. Well, come in, gentlemen. You're you're up rather early, aren't you? Don't make a move. Get your hands off. Oh, go. You ask him, he'll use it. What's the meaning of this? You'll find out. Get his keys, Jack. Easy there. I got him. This is piracy. You'll hang for this. Shut up. Hey, you're not at the wheel. Yeah. What do you want? Set the wheel and no monkey business. Well, like fun, I will. Hey, stop, fix up. Oh, why, you... Steady, Captain, or I'll crease your skull with a gun. Now, Captain, set the wheel. Captain Black, what are they doing this for? There's a quarter of a million in gold bullion aboard. That's what they're after. Right you are, Captain. Now, pick up your pilot. You'll have to carry him. They're locking you in the bunkers. Your ancient room men are already there. But you fool... Shut up and do as I say. Pick up the pilot and start walking. All right. Now, come on, miss him. You're coming, too. With the captain, the unconscious pilot, Bess and the crew locked in the bunkers, the pirates hurriedly brought out the gold and lowered it into the lifeboats. Then the lifeboats were lowered over the side of the Indian Queen. The men stood ready to cast off. Ready to cast off? Ready. Jake, set the wheel free and get aboard the other lifeboat. All right. All right. Climb in. Good. Let her go. Cast off and start rolling. Come on. Faster. Here we go. The wheel freeze, she'll start spinning now. Yeah, there she goes now. <laughs> she'll be spinning like a top by the time she hits the rapids. <laughs> well, Ace, everything worked out just like you planned it. <laughs> if I do say it myself, when I plan a job, I don't make any mistakes. Now there's only one thing left to do. Take care of that light, Keeper. Right. When that's done, we can head cross country for Alaska. It'll be days before anybody will know what happened. And then they won't know how it happened. Three miles downstream, Steve Ballard was checking the motor of his small launch, preparatory to meeting the Indian Queen, when he heard a familiar sound. Well, if it isn't King and Sergeant Preston. Hi there, King, old fella. I'm mighty glad to see you. Hello, Steve. Oh, morning, Sergeant. Hey, you and King are up early, aren't you? Yes, we broke camp before daylight. Thought we'd get here in time to have breakfast with you and Bess. I guess you're in plenty of time. I'm just getting ready to meet Bess. Meet her? Yeah, she went up river to Dawson a couple of days ago. Oh. She's due back on the Indian Queen. Well, you and King climb aboard and go with me. Good. We'll enjoy the boat ride. I'll leave my pack here. Get aboard, King. <laughs> I've been listening for the whistle of the Indian Queen before starting the motor. Maybe late for some reason. You meet the boat in open water, eh? Yes, I run up river about a half mile above the rapids. It's safer there. I guess you're right about that. Well, I'll start the motor and we can get going. Ah, she caught. It's a good motor you've got. Yes, yeah, the best there is, I guess. I'll let her warm up a minute. <laughs> What's the matter with King? Why, it's the Indian Queen. You saw her and barked a warning. Yes, there she is, coming into full view now. Something's wrong with that boat, Steve. I'll say there is. Look how she's spinning around in the current. She's out of control. She'll never ride through these rapids. Quick, Steve, cast off. Here we go. Get aboard that boat and take off the passengers and crew. Bess is among them. I know, Steve. Full throttle now. Right, Sergeant. All right, Steve. Swing alongside the packet and I'll fasten the line. Here we go. Ready now. Easy. Take past the stern line, Steve. Right, Sergeant. Hey, Sergeant. What is it? I don't see anyone in the wheelhouse. And there's no one on deck. There, we're tied alongside. Aboard, King. Let's go. 
I don't see a soul. Come on, Steve. Up to the wheelhouse. All right. There's no one here. Quick, Steve. Take the wheel. The wheel? But Sergeant Preston, I'm afraid... I said I... take that wheel. Get this packet under control before we hit the rapids. I guess I... I'll try. Of course you can. No. The... There, you're doing all right. But my wife and the others... What's happened to them? Steve. Yeah? The lifeboats, they're gone. Gone? And they must have abandoned ship. Looks that way, but why? No wonder we didn't hear the boat whistle. There was nobody aboard to blow it. Now, if I can just straighten her out... That's it. Steady now. There, you're doing all right, Steve. Getting near the shoals. Keep your nerve now. Smarter King? Where is he, Sergeant? Back by the bunkers. Acting very strangely. I better look into this. He's found something. We're going into the channel now. I hope I can handle it. Coming, King. What's the matter, fella? What have you found? Somebody's in there. I'll get you out. You're locked in. I'll have to break the lock. Let me get an axe. All the way, King. There. Oh, the mound is, King. That man's hurt. He's the pilot. They knocked him out. There's no one to man the helm. We'll be wrecked on the shoals. There is a man at the helm, Captain. There is? Who is he? Steve Ballard. Steve? He can't handle the job. When we reach the shoals, this packet will be smashed to bits. He can't keep us in the channel. You're in the channel now, and you'll stay there. Steve Ballard used to be a river pilot. You bet Steve was a pilot, and one of the best on the river. Well, all I've got to say is he better be good. This stretch of water is the worst to be found on any river. Stay right here, all of you. Don't bother Steve Ballard. A small group waited as the packet rocketed through the churning waters, curving this way and that as the steady hand of Steve Ballard held her in mid-channel. In the tension of the moment, Ace Dunham and his gang were forgotten. Then, as the little packet swept beyond the shoals to smooth water, yeah. everyone rushed to the wheelhouse. Oh, Steve! Bless. You were oh. wonderful! You made it! Well, I'll take over the wheel now. Thanks. The captain didn't think you could do it, Steve. <laughs> well, Sergeant, for a moment or so, I didn't think I would. But then... Then I heard Bess's voice, and I... I knew I had to. Oh, Steve! All I've got to say is we need pilots like you on this river. If you ever get tired tending light, just let me know. I'll see that you get a job. Thanks, Captain. That's a real compliment coming from you. Oh, Captain, tell us who locked you in the bunkers. Hey, I forgot all about that. I was so excited. And so was I. What happened? Uh, we were pirated. That's what happened. I was at the wheel when five men... Captain were Black, Bess, and the pilot told how Ace Dunham and his men, posing as passengers bound for the seacoast, had overpowered them and robbed the packet, then sent it adrift in the expectation that it would be wrecked on the shoals. When they had finished, Sergeant Preston said, Captain, I'll have to ask you to anchor. Anchor? Yes, I must get a detailed report from you, description of the men and so forth. Yes, of course. I left my pack ashore. We'll go back in the launch. It's still tied alongside. And while you're helping the sergeant, I'll fix breakfast for all of us. <laughs> well, now, that's what I call hospitality. I'll get the motorboat started, sir. You'll go ashore with us, Captain? Yes. Indian Queen can lie here at anchor. I'll leave the pilot and the crew aboard. Simpson, that's the word drop the anchor. I know, sir. Stand ready to drop anchor. Aye, sir. Steve guided the launch upstream past the rapids and put into shore near the lighthouse. In the adjacent cottage, Bess Ballard served a hearty breakfast to the captain, to Steve, and to Sergeant Preston, while the Mounties secured information for his official report. <laughs> Any more questions, Sergeant? Well, I have all the information I need, Captain. Now I must get after those five men who committed piracy. Sergeant Preston, where's King? He took out after a rabbit and we came up to the house. <laughs> That's right. I saw him disappear in the timber. Maybe gone for an hour. These Yukon rabbits can give a dog a run, even King. <laughs> well, then I'll save his breakfast oh, for him. Come over anyway. It, it's them. It's the pirates. Five of them. Yes, it's us, and we mean business. Come on, men. Right, right, right with us. So you've turned pirate, eh, Dunham? You recognize me, eh, Monty? From a description I got from the States not long ago, I was informed you and your gang were headed this way. You let me handle my troubles, Monty. You're in plenty of trouble right now yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do we do with them, Ace? There's more of them here than we expected. Get that launch motor started, Jack. I said I was going to sink the Indian Queen with everybody aboard, and I'm still going to do it. I'd better disarm the Mountie before I go. Yeah, good idea. Go ahead. Take it easy, Mountie. I'll disarm you. Don't try any tricks. I'll keep him covered. Go ahead, Jack. Take his gun. King had returned to the house and paused <laughs> at the open door. He saw one man holding a gun on Sergeant Preston 
and another standing directly in front of the Mountie and reaching to disarm him. At that same instant, Sergeant Preston saw his dog and shouted, Get him, King! King charged into the room directly at the legs of Dunham with force enough to knock the outlaw off his feet. Sergeant Preston snatched the opportunity and drove a hard fist to the stomach of the man called Jack and followed with a hook to the chin. King's jaws gripped the arm of Dunham. He held the outlaw down and helpless. Sergeant Preston's quick blows had put Jack out of the fight. Then the Mountie turned on another of the pirates. Steve Ballard and the captain had leaped into action and were attacking the remaining two. That does it. Stand by, boys. You cooks, get your hands up. You're covered. I have a gun, too. Get him up, you rat. Call off this dog, will you? That'll do, King. Dunham, you can get up. Steve, you and the captain search these pirates. I'll keep them covered. It was just a short time later. Dunham and his four henchmen had been taken as prisoners to the launch. They sat glum and silent. We've got to get these crooks aboard the Indian Queen, Captain Black. I hope you don't mind turning back up rivers so I can take them into Dawson. Don't mind at all, Sergeant Preston. After what you and King and Steve did, it's little enough I'm doing in return. Uh, Captain. Uh, yes, Steve. Would you mind if... If what? If I took the wheel and put the Indian Queen through the rapids again? Why, no, Steve. Why do you want to do that? To prove to myself I've got my nerve back. You see, I lost it once and I never thought I'd regain it. Then the wheel's yours, Steve. I'll trust you any day. Steve, are you... Are you sure you can make it? You want to come along and see me? <laughs> uh, if I wasn't sure, I wouldn't take you aboard. <laughs> I'll go aboard. And this time, Mrs. Ballard, it'll be the pirates instead of us who are prisoners on the Indian Queen. Well, for that, you can thank King. <laughs> yes, I mean you, King. <laughs> but hadn't been for you, those murderous pirates would have killed us all. Well, you're right about that. <laughs> He acts like he's trying to tell us something, Sergeant. Maybe you know what he's saying. He's glad to see these men in ropes. He knows this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Now, fair warning. Our terrific Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice offer will be over before you know it. Send for your new official Challenge of the Yukon two-way signal flashlight right now. You've heard how this special new pocket-sized flashlight sends out beams of red light or beams of green light. It's out of this world for secret codes and messages. Hurry, send for yours at once. Tomorrow, sure. Supplies are limited. Send only 25 cents, one single quarter, and one box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. Mail to Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. Here's that address again. Flashlight, Chicago 50, Illinois. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Ambush at 40 Mile. When Bill Brooks at 40 Mile asked to have King and me sent there to track down a gang of crooks, I didn't realize I might be writing to my death. The manner in which the killers planned their ambush prevented them from making sure their bullet had killed me and gave me a chance to have them walk into a trap I had planned. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.